Wow, thank you very much, Jody. And uh, yeah, today's about uh, uh, awareness and, and uh, you know, moving our awareness up and coming up with possible solutions, seeing if seeing there's things that we can be doing better. Once, once you start asking the questions, you go, you know, can I be doing better? Can we, can we all be doing just a little bit better? And uh, I think the answer is always yes. So, uh, but it starts with knowing what, what, what's going on a little bit, and that's what we're hoping to achieve today. Uh, we do have an agenda, uh, and it's going to start with uh, introductions. And what we like to do with the introductions is just spend a, you know, a minute or two just going through the list and just telling people where we're from. And uh, I'd like to ask these two questions today with the introductions. You know, where are you at the moment, and have you downsized? So uh, I'm just going to scroll through who I see on the screen, and uh, I'll start with uh, myself. I'm, I'm half of the uh, the team here. Uh, Joanne's my my wonderful partner, and and uh, there she's right there. Uh, we are in uh, spoiling ourselves in this beautiful beachfront home in New Zealand, uh, packing up to go tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we've just had a wonderful, wonderful time, and in, in, in New Zealand, such a We've, we've decided that New Zealand's probably the most livable place on the planet. We just, we just love it so much. Uh, we have definitely downsized. Uh, we've gone, we're down to uh, just uh, a backpack each and, and, and like one carry-on and one bag each in, in the world. So, uh, and we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty comfortable with that. So uh, I'm going to uh, ask Louise to introduce herself. Hi there. I'm on my iPad, so I have to find the mute, the unmute okay. button. <laughs> um, I'm Louise. <clears throat> Excuse me. One half of uh, uh, Tim and Louise, and uh, we're the uh, owners of House Sitting World, and we manage the House Sitting World uh, Facebook group as well. And uh, we are currently in Banff. You can't see. I'm in the wrong place. You see the mountains, but we're surrounded by this beautiful uh, uh, Canadian Rockies. We even had snow, Doug, May, May, May long weekend. We had snow up on the mountains. It was bloody cold. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. <laughs> Thank, thanks very much. It happens every year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yet we, we downsized, absolutely. We're still not completely fully downsized because uh, we know that we will eventually have to stop being mobile and mm -hmm. nomadic and so what we chose to do was to uh keep enough uh furniture to be able to um, um furnish a, a one-bedroom apartment should we find a place that we want to settle now the the whole idea that we had in mind when we first started this was to find a place to settle <laughs> and to retire but we haven't found it yet so um we're hoping to make it to new zealand that's on our bucket list yeah. it's always been on mine doug so all right good um, i'm really jazzed and stoked by your your blog and and uh, how you. you're how you're having a great time there so thank there you, you go thank you, wouldn't it be fascinating if if we all ended up settling in the same spot <laughs> wouldn't that be interesting <laughs> <laughs> we could just call it the inner circle uh compound yeah yeah, yeah. From, <laughs> from, from retired house sitters there you go yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're old house sitters go to retire <laughs> oh, thank you Louise. yeah uh, thank you Louise. uh joan where are you to this morning or today I think it's got it. Hi, this is Joan. Hi, Hi Joan. Joan. And we're currently back in Seattle where we're actually from. We are house sitting in Seattle and we are totally without a home. Uh, we have items in storage that we are trying to um, just start selling off. I'm actually working on that now while we're back in Seattle. We're going to be here through September. And then I'm heading back home to New Zealand for uh, six weeks. That's where I'm from. So I want to get down there before the rest of you decide you're going to get down there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's Great. what that's what we're doing. This has been a um, two-year process for yeah. us to get to where we've got. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, and then we have Stacy. And I know where you are, Stacy, but you want to tell everybody else where you are and have you downsized? Okay. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Stacey. I'm probably about 10 minutes from Doug at the moment in New Zealand. Um, I'm a marine scientist in the process of downsizing to a tiny house camper van 
um, and then traveling six months of the year, just waiting for my kids to leave home, please. Um, yeah, getting there. <laughs> I'm oh, getting there. I've got a plan. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Stacey. And uh, we might be relying on your, uh, your wisdom here a bit today. Um, you know, Stacey's a marine biologist and has a great wealth of what's going on and, uh, on the planet and uh, has lots to offer. Uh, by the way, just so you know that uh, this, isn't, uh, you know, this is an open forum, of course, and, and we will be looking later on for practical tips and hopefully coming up with a, a resource of, of tips that, we've all used, or that some of you have used to... Uh, to reduce our footprint. So keep that in mind for a little bit later on. Thank you. And then Naomi, where are you from? And have you downsized? Or where are you at the moment? And have you downsized? I was going to say, as, as Jody knows, the where are you from question is always difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I keep you um, <laughs> <laughs> Where am I at the moment? I'm, I'm on the last couple of weeks of a three month sit in Sydney um, and then heading down to Hobart and Tassie for a short sit and then over to New Zealand, Kerry Kerry. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so have I downsized? Yes. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, I have, uh, in terms of like the nomad world, I'm probably classified as a heavy packer because um, I've got uh, a very big duffel that I check when I travel. And then I've got my backpack, which basically carries everything I need for my office. Um, uh, but I do that because it's, again, no judgment. It's my choice that I don't want to constantly be buying things. And I travel across all four, um, uh, client, uh, all four seasons and all around the world. So I have everything in my bag that can cover, you know, deep winter in Sweden to hot summer in Darwin. You know, so so that's what I do. That's my choice. Um, I also hate shopping, so it's a little bit a little bit of both there. Um, so yeah. yes, I've downsized. I do have some boxes at my aunt's farm in Sydney. I mean, in in northern New South Wales, um, but I haven't seen them in years, so I don't <laughs> even know if they're still actually surviving. Let them go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi. And uh, by the way, our next host sit up in Kerry Kerry comes to us courtesy of Naomi. So uh, we're, very, we're very thankful for the inner circle for that. And hello, Sharon, where are you guys today? Where are you at the moment and have you downsized? Hi, <clears throat> I'm Sharon. I'm a solo traveler. Yeah, I've downsized. I don't, I just carry, carry on. I do have a couple of suitcases at my sister's place in Sydney. I'm also from New Zealand. Oh. And I'll be there one day again. Don't know when. Right now, I'm in Patsquaro in Mexico, sitting in a beautiful house, watching a beautiful oh, sunset. Oh, great. Thank you. And uh, Lise, Lisa, where are you at the moment? Have you downsized? Um, I'm in Carlsbad, California, which is near my home. And um, frankly, I'm pretty new to this, and I'm not even sure what that means, but I. We, would, we just went to Italy and I took one, one bag that could be put in the overhead. So I'm not sure if that counts or not, but uh, this is new to me. Great. Thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Karen, where are you at the moment? And have oh, you done <laughs> Um I'm in Eden, New South Wales, Australia. I'm at work in my office come storeroom, as you can see. And yes, constantly in the process of downsizing. Great. Uh, but yeah, a house that's got 40 years of living and children growing up. So yeah, it's a big process to downsize, but enjoying it when I've got the energy. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. And now, thanks for joining us today. And Jane, can you unmute yourself? Hi, can you hear us? Yeah, we got you. Oh, great. We've been having audio trouble. Um, but yeah, I'm Jane Ellen, and this is my husband, Jamie. We're currently in Melbourne on our very first house sit here in Australia. And we're All right. It's been a wonderful experience. Uh, as for downsizing, we have actually, we have maybe a bed and a few boxes stored at my parents' house in America. And otherwise, we both have a bag of peace that we travel with. We're pretty minimal ourselves. Great. Minimalist. Love it. Uh, 
Thank you. Thanks for joining us, and congratulations on your sit. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Christina has chatted that uh, she's in Cincinnati, Ohio, where she lives, and she's not traveling as yet, so she hasn't downsized. But uh, have I missed anybody? Is that we got? Anybody? Me. I think. <laughs> Who? I'm Jody. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, because this is, it's not just the. Come on. Not just Does anybody here. not know Jody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, for six plus years, um, it's been a process of downsizing just with the luggage carried. And um, yeah, now that we're in Southeast Asia, um, downsize even more. So, rather than taking one wheeled duffel each and a backpack, um, we've actually cut down even more. We've just got one uh, wheeled um, you know, checked bag between us now and um, our carry-on. So um, a bit like Naomi, we do like to go through all seasons. So it makes it um, a little bit harder uh, at times to um, you know, buy all the time or you know, just have something ready to go. Uh, but I do like, um, I'm not sure if Naomi was gonna bring this up later, but uh, uh, on a huddle about a year ago when um, she actually shared with regards to apparel, we did a apparel conversation. Um, and back then, Naomi brought to my attention that uh, there are specific companies that um, uh, you know, have a lesser footprint than other companies. And um, I guess sort of ethically, she prefers to buy clothing items um, from those companies, clothing or, or equipment. And um, I've started to become a little bit more aware of that as well. And uh, for the, the cost of, say, paying to check for check one bag to have you know, one decent jacket or other pieces of clothing that I know will last for five or six years, um, as opposed to constantly changing over. Um, I think I like to kind of be a little bit a foot either side with that. Um, you know, definitely am a fan of uh, charity stores and um, upcycling as such, um, mm -hmm. and not very rarely do we buy new, um, but I think now it's, it's sort of probably a bit more of a choice of buying new with quality um, and with the efficacy mm -hmm. as well. Great, yeah, thank you. Thank you, now we know who you are. <laughs> and, and, and isn't it interesting though that, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a process of fine tuning. When, you, when you're nomadic and, and everything you own, you know, like, you, like we go through a mall now, we'll go shopping or something, we don't buy anything. Like we, we have no need, you know, we, do what we, have, we replace what we have, but literally we don't, Oh, I need to buy this to make myself feel better. I just, we just, you know, if, if a pair of shorts wear out, you buy another pair, but you don't, you know, it's not, and, 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 and the quality is important as well, I think. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fascinating process to be nomadic. And being in Southeast Asia at the moment, um, I would like to, you know, bring a few things up as we go through this because it's definitely been eye opening being here, um, very different from any other place that we've traveled in all these years as well. So, it's okay. definitely making a bit more of an impact being here as well. Good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we know that uh, house sitting reduces our footprint in that it's part of the sharing economy. I mean, we're in this, these people's home and, uh, and it allows them to go travel. But it, you know, sharing is, is obviously better than everybody owning everything. And uh, it's just the, you know, the win-win that is house sitting is, 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 is by its nature very... Um, sustainable uh we consume much less obviously like I, I think we consume a lot less uh you know many people we, we don't have cars anymore many of us uh, and just being nomadic it's just how sitting by its nature uh is is good for the good for uh the environment i think and, and actually just before i get started uh, uh um, i was just reading where yeah, they did a, a dive to the Mariana Trench, which is you know, the deepest part, seven miles down, the deepest part of the planet. Uh, it went seven miles as far as they've ever been. And what, what did they find there? Plastic. So, you know, we know there's a big problem. And uh, today isn't so much about identifying the problem because that, that could be uh, a full course and, you know, uh, and then environmental studies, 
we, I think everybody here agrees that, that there's an issue that needs to be addressed. So um, we'll go on here. Uh, Doug, I'd just like to add to the the concept of the, um, um, yeah, okay, we consume less, uh, but we are still consumers. So that's sort of, I think, where the, the main conversation is. Uh, but just a concept to consider as uh, a house sitter that is maybe not, or a nomad who is not owning um, much anymore, we still get to be stewards of the things that we get to own for a short period of time. So um, yeah. we just like the idea yeah. of stewardship. It's kind of like, yes, this is our dining room table and, you know, all the equipment mm -hmm. in the house, the air conditioner, the et cetera, et cetera. The consumption aspect is there, but we're just stewards mm -hmm. of it as opposed to owners of it. Well put. Thank you. And uh, so one of the things we need to look at is how do we travel? Uh, you know, are we using public transit, uh, Uber? Etc. Are there are there other ideas that people have to, to travel, uh, to share travel, that, that I don't know about? Uh, feet. Naomi. P, Naomi says she uses her feet a lot. <laughs> Good for her. And bicycles. <laughs> but uh, the issue that's kind of uh, that I, I've sort of been wanting to explore more is about cruise ships. I know a lot of people love to cruise, uh, and I've I've been trying to delve into that a little bit to find out just exactly how sustainable cruise ships are um, and I did find the information is a little bit scattered because uh, largely the industry's um, not overly regulated once they're in international waters there's, no, there's not a lot that that, that controls cruise, cruise ship activity uh, but the Pacific Sanders said that uh, a cruise ship uh, the passengers carbon footprint while cruising is roughly three times of that while they're on land and there are, there is a movement, you know, that people are, some cruise companies are trying to uh, improve their image of the, of, the, of the business when people think about sustainability. Uh, but, you know, the two big companies, Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean and Carnival, uh, have both received a D uh, from, from Friends of the Earth, uh, which tabulates sewage treatment and, and pollution and, and water quality in that. Uh, anybody have any, any experience on that? I'd like to hear what people have to say. Doug, I just want to jump in there really quickly, mm -hmm. um, uh, just to say that I, uh, as as you probably know, I'm I'm not a big fan personally of of cruising because of the footprint. However, um, I do think it's really important that when we examine this to um, approach it from from a kind of a comprehensive viewpoint and so the other side so friends of the earth puts out this this um uh scorecard of different companies and whatnot the cruise lines respond that they don't agree with the um way they calculate everything so they haven't responded in several years which is one of the reasons the the score is what it is okay. so okay. i I think that that it's really, really important to do the research, but also to do comprehensive research so that we can't, when we make a decision, be, be um, you know, said that we're just looking at one side of the equation. That is very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Stacey, uh, you want to um, uh, jump in on this topic as well? Yeah, I was just saying um, there are international laws protecting the high seas. Um, and so it's up to every country that signs into these laws to mm -hmm. um, to make sure. Like, so there are laws preventing waste being disposed at sea and overfishing and things like that. Um, but I mean, as we had in this discussion, it's who monitors that, um, mm -hmm. and that's the issue. Um, I do feel like cruise ships are singled out quite a lot. I know that they are. Um, they are. There is a problem. Um, but container ships, in my opinion, are actually worse than okay. cruise ships. So okay. um, that's, I agree with Naomi, you know, you've got to look at um, mm -hmm. a lot. There's, there's so many contributing factors to all of this. We can't of course. just single out cruise ships, but mm -hmm. cruise ships are a good one to use because everybody is more likely, every common Joe like us is more likely to use a cruise ship. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. two cents. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, there are laws. There are definitely international laws. Yeah. Um, I can't off the top of my head name them, but um, 
yeah there mm. is there is laws against that sort of thing nobody is allowed to dump anything at sea um but like we said who who monitors that so yeah thank you thank you Stacey. and did not carnival cruise ships uh get fined recently they had a 40 million dollar fine for violating uh water quality laws and then and they were and then I heard they were, uh, they violated that. They're, they're on probation, I guess, and they violated that again. And, and, and there's, and I mean, you look at how much money they make, 40 oh. million is nothing. No, no. That's, uh, that's the problem. There needs to be um, fining in money yeah. is good, but that's not going to hurt them because they just make more money. <laughs> they need yeah. to be banned. <laughs> there's always a lineup at the buffet table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, it's the same with the, it is the same with shipping companies, and it's also the same with fishing companies. Um, mm. There are fines handed out, mm. but when they're making, when it's just like a, a penny yeah. to us, that's the equivalent to them. They don't care. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. It's not. Worth, um, we need to think about uh, ways. Jory's got her hand up. Uh, just a question uh, from, does anybody know uh, if a fine is um, put out and then does actually get paid as opposed to kind of all in, ignoring it, um, does that money actually go back into cleaning up the oceans? Uh, does anyone actually under, like know whether that money is used um, appropriately or whether it's just going and lining some other person's pocket for some reason? Hmm. Yeah. I think a portion goes to the fixing whatever it is that they've done wrong. Um, but it also goes into those international communities who are monitoring and who are making those laws. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> there'd be a whole separate um, company that does that, yeah. Thank, thank you very much. I think the reason, well, the, I know the reason I brought that up is I just you know, want people to, Again, that awareness. I mean, before you book, and if you decide that decide that's the way you want to go, it's just ask those questions and find out, and maybe find out if there's cruise companies that have a better a track record, and and, and uh, give it some thought. You know, is is that what we want to do, or uh, uh, are you okay with that? Uh, here's a biggie. <laughs> uh, a recent headline in the Guardian stated that the. The avoiding meat and dairy is the biggest way to reduce your impact on the planet. Uh, I am not, uh, again, not, you know, that, that's, that's somebody's choice for sure. And, and, and uh, but, it, you know, when you start reading the statistics on what, you know, meat production uh, does to the planet, it, it's quite, it's, it's, it's undeniable. You know, more than 80% of farmland is used for livestock but it only produces 18% of the food calories and 37% of the protein. So, uh, and it, actually New Zealand's a really interesting example because, you know, they're, they're talking a lot about, uh, you know, the size of the cattle herds here and, and, and what it's doing and, and can they get more uh, boutique -y? you know, can we, can we be, can we have smaller farms, but better product and, and, and target a market that's more, uh, more sustainable. Um, beef results in 105 kilograms of greenhouse gases per 100 grams of meat and tofu produces less than 3.5 kilograms. The good news is, uh, I think, I mean, everybody makes their own choices, but something that uh, has caught my interest in the last while, little while is something called flex flexitarianism. So, you know, I'm not saying everybody has to run out and be a vegan. You know, it's not, it's not everybody's choice. but the concept of being flexible in your diet so that, you know, I was raised eating meat three times a day. You know, we had meat three times. There's nothing flexible about having, you know, bacon and ham and, and roast beef as, as your, your three meals a day. Uh, but, you know, flexitarianism, you know, increasing your plant-based diet, uh, but allowing for the meat. So that if, you know, if you're out for dinner, you don't have to be, basically what you're saying, you don't have to be fanatic about it. You know, if you're, uh, you know, out for somebody, somebody, somebody invites you for dinner, and they're they're serving roast beef. Well, then have the roast beef, uh, but but it reduce it overall. Uh, and and I thought that's an interesting approach. Uh, 
I personally am not very much a flex flexitarian because I'm I'm a, a diet in the world vegetarian. So uh, I think we we can uh, be as house centers we can be great role models uh, in in you know, demonstrating a more sustainable lifestyle. Um, you know, beach cleanup comes to mind. Uh, uh, we did we were doing beach cleanups. You know. In Nicaragua at Laguna de Pollo, where uh, we spent time with jo Nat and Jody, you know the the garbage that was left on the beach daily was atrocious, just absolutely disgusting. And it was a reserve, and the people would leave piles and piles of plastic. And uh, you know, I was, I found it offensive myself, so uh, you know, I took it upon myself to get out the garbage bags and go down every day and pick up the garbage. And I do it so that everybody could see me doing it. You know, and, and they're looking at me like, what the hell's wrong with gringo, you know? But the point was, you know, I wanted to make a, an example. And I wanted to show that this was not right. And, and as quite voice, voices, like, this is what we do. Uh, and, uh, you know, tell people what you're doing. We, we obviously take our bags to the market like most of us do. But for countries where they're still using plastic, you know, we tell people what we're doing and, and why, why we use uh, the you know, reusable bags. Uh, so I think we can we can become aware, and then share that awareness. You know, and and, and use our social media influence if they see something that's uh, needs to be shared out, so other people, you know, in this group and in your your network, uh, need to know. You know, don't be don't be afraid to get it out there. Uh, it was uh, Sandy Ball that told me that uh, you know she shared with me that. Uh, June 8th is World Ocean Day, and they are going to be in, in the Canary Islands where they're planning to have uh, set the world record for the most amount of nationalities cleaning up a beach. So uh, that's really so, cool. You know, I think there's something that um, individually, if time permits, uh, you know, if you're a traveler that has got extra time on your hands, then perhaps do the research to see if there's any activities happening like that. Um, and maybe even start to plan your travels around some of these bigger events that you can take part in as well. Um, and or just, as you say, Doug, start something. You know, you, if, you, mm -hmm. if you've got a long enough amount of time in an area, um, perhaps you could start something. So, you know, here for an example, we've got seven weeks in Singapore and we joined a, um, an expat group to go walking. Um, it would be nothing to just start to say to that expat group, hey, is there anything in the calendar that we could maybe, you know, do to make a little bit of a difference? Um, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was a, a beach cleanup or some other sort of activity as well. Jody, is there something that uh, us in the inner circle could do on June 8th? You know, if we're, if we're at the beach on June 8th, can we uh, promote that on the website and, and maybe uh, ask our members who are near the ocean to, to contribute and or, or I think that's a fantastic idea, and especially if we could get like a photo collage, like if everyone could do a selfie or some sort of thing to say, hey, I'm here, or I'm here. And I don't think it even needs to be ocean. I mean, it can be lakeside, it can be riverside, it can be sort of, of anywhere, any, of any picnic area or, or wherever you may be. But um, I mean, yeah, we, we, I, we haven't even been to the beach here in Singapore. I have not even stepped mm. foot on, I mean, we're on an island, <laughs> but we haven't been to <laughs> the beach side as yet. Right. Um, and I really don't even know. I mean, other than knowing that Singapore is incredibly clean, um, you know, mm. we, until we get down there and see. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's things that you see just in walking in you know, your park area mm. and wherever else. So Great. So let's, let's challenge the inner circle to, to be proactive on World Ocean Day and, and you know, take it upon ourselves to do something and uh, take a photograph and post them posting doing good stuff sounds good and with uh, regards yeah. to that social media influence doug i think it is important um you know from as i said at, at the very start before we started recording if anybody would like to uh share this recording with their blog with social media to sort of um bring awareness to others mm -hmm. uh, i can certainly put my hand up to say you know i haven't been somebody who's gone and researched things um, just as things come into my awareness, I start to make different decisions about things, uh, what I'm purchasing, mm -hmm. what I'm using. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully we can share it out yeah. through social media. Here's, here's just 
you know, what's been rumbling around in my head, and, and I'm sure there's a lot more that we need to share here today, but, uh, you know, uh, Jody, you were talking about uh, uh, shopping locally and eat, eating locally. Uh, that, that's, you know, that, to us, that's just um, one of the joys. I mean, the first thing we look at when we get anywhere is, you know, where's your market? Where, where's the Saturday market? You know, we, we want to find our way into the market and, and and learn the foods and and uh, and and eat locally and uh, and it's just it's enjoyable, but it's also you know it's that cutting down the, the transportation of food, the, the requirement to transport food and 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 buy buy in bulk. Uh, but but the other thing that uh, and this this was sort of yesterday we went into a um, a pretty uh, Tony um, um, kitchen center store. Where they're selling kitchen items, it's just they got nice stuff. And right in the very front, the very very first thing in this store is all their cool green products and their sustainable products. And it's, it's the very first you walk in, and there it is. This this stuff is good for the planet, kind of thing. And it's all um, uh, it's all branded green, you know. And it's got nice little brown packaging and things. And it's it's fascinating ideas. But it's bloody expensive. It's like, you know, like you're paying twelve dollars for a straw. You know, like come on. So, you know, what we what we like to do is okay. Let's look at what there is, and then let's go to the, the dollar store and see if we can get it for a buck. And rather than you know, and be a little bit more creative rather than just buying into this uh, this industry that's kind of you know making big profit on 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 being sustainable. So. Uh, we're, we're trying to look look to see where we can get, you know, and stay within budget because, you know, sustainable choice. I mean, you could probably pick a very sustainable cruise ship that, that only does, you know, the finest of everything, but could you afford it? You know, and vice versa, you know, and then, so, you know, there's always that balance. I guess that's the balance that, that the whole planet's uh, struggling with. Sorry. Oh, please, can I just please, add please. something to that, Doug? Please, 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 um, yes. Another, another avenue to look at is hemp products. Hemp products. Uh, they've been around forever. Uh, being mm -hmm. from the West Coast, you're probably familiar. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but they now have uh, uh, hemp pla uh, like plastic containers. They look like plastic containers, but they're made from hemp, hemp products, and they break down uh, mm -hmm. very, very quickly, and, and they're durable. Another thing to look at that we use is the um, mesh bags for, mm -hmm. for your uh, vegetables and mm -hmm. your fruit. So you take them to the store with your bags, your reusable bags, and instead of using the plastic bag, exactly, instead of using the plastic bag to put your vegetables and your fruit in, you mm -hmm. use the mesh bags. And then you mm -hmm. bring them home and put them in the fridge that way. So you, you start yeah. cutting down on your plastic that way as well. Yeah, that's a good one, Louise. Uh, just uh, um, Can I? Yeah, Naomi, wanna, come, on, come in. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I just wanna, um, so I want to add my, my voice to the chorus about, about everybody saying awareness is the key. Um, you know, Stacey mentioned it in the chat. You've mentioned it m multiple times. Jody's mentioned it multiple times. And that really is the cornerstone of, of everything here. You know, I, it's actually the cornerstone of everything you do, period. Like I coach clients in time management and workflow efficiencies. Very exciting. And I'm a bookkeeper. So we talk about budgeting, everything in terms of how you deal with your finances and how you deal with your time is about awareness. And then the next step from that is setting your priorities. And so that is exactly what a budget is. It's setting your priorities for your finances. And so here, when we're talking about sustainability and your life choices, it is about setting your priority, priorities and then asking yourself, are my actions lining up with my priorities? So mm. I will actually push back on a point that you just made. So yes, I think there are a lot of people uh, a lot of companies out there who are um, greenwashing their marketing and taking advantage of the trends and charging increased prices. That is true. There are also um, the uh, companies who are trying their best to put a footprint into creating things in a more sustainable way. And mm -hmm. because they don't have as big a market share yet, they have to charge 
uh, a bit more. And so you have to do your research. So for example, where I want to push back is the seeing something that is expensive and then going to the dollar store. Because my question to you is then, what is the upstream effect of that item that you're buying at the dollar store? Is it a company that then has unfair labor practices and bad manufacturing processes in some country that doesn't have strong regulations? Right. So it, it is a matter of this expanding awareness and just always asking yourself the question. It's, it's you know, I'll go, it's the same thing with with uh, being a citizen and, and voting you, with sustainability, with what kind of earth we want to live on. We are voting every single day mm -hmm. by choosing where you put your dollars by choosing which companies you want to support and which products you want to support. Every single day you are casting a vote. Now the question mm. is, do you want to cast a conscious vote or an unconscious vote? Mm. There is, I am not saying you have to choose one or the other. It, that is mm. your choice. Mm -hmm. The question is to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. All right, that's my soapbox. <laughs> that's good, that's good, thank you. I, and I'd just like to add to what Naomi's saying there, um, just with a little test that everybody could do. And that is to, and I'm sure many of you here have never, ever experienced this, so you're really going to have to step into your imagination. Um, but having personally experienced it many a times, it is actually something that helps you um, establish uh, what your true values are. Now, your values can change because as you become more aware of these kinds of choices and as you do become aware, as, as Naomi said, of say what your budget is, it's like, okay, this much comes in, this much goes out. I get to make a choice on how I, you know, spend my money. Mm -hmm. um, but just literally imagine that you are down to your last, let's say, pick a number, Let, you're down to your last $10. You have nothing else left today and ten dollars is all you have what do you value you know what do you value what would be your choice is it mm. a value of i need to survive and eat um is it a value of you know i need to um place this somewhere that perhaps i can see avoid opening to replenish it, um, you know, and if, if Mother Nature itself is a replenishment thing where, you know, she takes so she can give and that whole kind of circular motion happens through everything. Um, but just start to understand what your values are. You know, if you value that money itself higher than what it is that your body is going to experience or that your, uh, your environment is going to experience or whatever, putting value on money itself um, is, you know, a process that I'm certainly going on myself in to say, well, this is just a exchange tool. It's just a bartering tool um, that it doesn't actually have any value in unless I give it value. So where do you want to place your values? And that, and I, as I said, that can change. That's sort of my addition to that is start to look at these types of choices. Yeah. Cast a judgment. It's a, a company that's trying to, you know, profit off of social awareness and trends. Um, or does it feel like it is, you know, maybe go and check out the crowdfunding um, websites to see what, what little individuals are trying to get, you know, a bamboo straw toothbrush containers off the ground and they need your support. You know, perhaps that last ten dollars that you have today could be better spent on a crowdfunding um, project that might just help make a difference ten years down the track. Like, you know, not that I'm saying you have to do that, but just start to establish your own values of um, what's important to you today, and then check in in another month or year's time and say what's important to me now. That's good. Good. Uh, good conversation. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll get next. So yeah. Uh, so so now we're going to get to what. What are we doing? And, and we want to walk away with some, some new ideas and some things that we can do. Uh, we talked about the reusable bags, and, and, and of course, I'm onto the mesh bag now, like uh, uh, Louisa mentioned, because you know, it's just, you, know, you walk into the, the store, you walk into the, the grocery store here, and it's, it's like a castle built on plastic. Like everything is plastic. You, you, how do you come out of there without plastic? It's, it's almost, uh, almost beyond belief and if you're reusing it I guess that's a good thing but 
you know, how can we reduce? So, uh, you know, there's, I was, you know, toothbrush and straws. Uh, what else? What else are people? This is where we get to, to share our ideas. I think, um, I think plastic is usually the first people think of when, okay, I want to make a difference. I'm going to start with plastic, but it's quite easy to become overwhelmed with all the choices that you can do to reduce your footprint. Um, and I think the trick is to just start small. So next time you're in the shower, turn the shower off when you're soaping yourself up. Um, you know, you're saving however many litres of water. So just that awareness that we keep talking about in everyday life means that you can start now and you can start small. Um, like turn the tap off when you brush your teeth. Um, so it's not just about plastic, it's about water, it's about um, the products that you're putting down the drain. Um, you know, everything leads to the ocean. So just being aware of, okay, um, it's not just plastic. Yes, it, mm -hmm. plastic is the big one and that's what people are focusing on. Um, mm -hmm. But like Naomi was saying, you know, it's choose where you spend your dollar. Um, you can use vinegar and um, bicarb soda, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you're saving money. You're choosing where mm -hmm. you spend your dollar. You're not putting mm -hmm. crap down the sink. Um, so you're kind of hitting three birds at once. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, we keep going back to that awareness thing but yeah it's not just plastic um yeah like, and it's, yeah, it's one of those one of my favorite sayings at the moment is um because a lot of people are saying oh but what can i do i'm just one person and it seems to be quite um, overwhelming for a lot of people who are first becoming aware of all these issues and there's all these people preaching you can't do this you can't do that you can't do this mm. you can't do that so people that are, are confused by all this do nothing. Um, but uh, one of my favourite sayings, as I was saying, is um, it's just one plastic bag said seven billion people. Yeah. Um, you know, you might, if all you do today is turn the tap off for two minutes while you're in the shower, if you do that for 30 days, how many litres of water have you saved? You know, it's just thinking really, 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 really small instead of, getting all overwhelmed by how big the subject is. So, yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. preach over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm passionate I'm a, like Naomi. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I'm I'm a firm believer. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a firm believer in vinegar. Vinegar and, and uh, uh, bicarb or, or vinegar and borax and orange peels or whatever, however you want to do it. It's, an, it's amazing. We've forgotten about these are all things that, that we used to do before we we became so modernized <laughs> and and Doug you'll remember this and probably Joan and and, and others you know we grew up in a uh, generation that was looking ahead to the future we were all going to be like the Jetsons we were going to have all these really cool things flying cars and all of these all of these things were, were brought into the system to make our lives easier and yeah. now they're, they're choking us and killing us and we just have to stop and go, hey, wait a minute, let's take a step back. You can make your own soap. You can make your own uh, um, a face cream and, and, and cleansing creams and things like that that aren't filled with chemicals. That mm -hmm. you know, You're putting less chemicals down the drain, like Stacy said. One step at a time, one person at a time. And it's these little steps that you do. Sure, everybody else is, is um, you know, not participating, but you are. And really, in the, at the end of the day, it's what you can acknowledge that you have done and that you can say your, con your, your conscious conscience, sorry, is clear because you have made these changes. Mm -hmm. So if seven, people, seven billion people say that, then mm -hmm. we're well on our way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Louise. Well, I just want to add to that is uh, one thing that kind of brought, brought to my awareness uh, was I read something recently where every toothbrush I've ever used is still on the planet. <laughs> now, like, think about that. Like, there's a pile of toothbrushes that are st still out there somewhere that didn't need to be, you know? So, I mean, 
it is it is just one person, but it's a big mess. <laughs> we're messy people. <laughs> we're the only we're the only um, animal that poops in their own nest. <laughs> so, uh, the one thing I just wanted to say is is whatever the specific action is that you choose to take, because all of our lives are different, all of our routines are different, our locations are different. I think the key point is just to ask yourself, uh, like, uh, again, go back to the awareness, what are your priorities? And for example, mm -hmm. if you are purchasing something, instead of just saying, do I like this? Add on one more question. How is it made? Or how is it produced? Or how, you know, ask the how question. Um, because if you're shopping for a, a new pair of trousers, you know, and you're shopping online and you're not in a store or whatever, it's one extra click to go down to the, the bottom of the website and see, do they have an environmental and social responsibility page? Or do they have a question in the FAQ, uh, the, the frequently asked questions? Um, and, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm a bit, overzealous about that so if they don't sometimes I'll send an email and say so can you tell me how your products are made before I buy it mm. but it's like that's part of my vote is is I want to support your country so it's it's so and Stacey is saying in the chat do I need this yes absolutely so it's, it's first question. when whenever as consumers as we're buying something it is not just oh shiny new thing will this fill what I need but as Stacy says, do I need this? And then how is it made? You know, and, and is, is that something? And again, if that is not your priority in this moment, that is your choice. It's just about being aware that that is the choice that you are making, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Naomi. I, you know, do you need this is a great question. I mean, we've come a stage of our lives where we wear things out, like, like, you know, we wear the sandals down to the quick before we actually replace them. We don't, we don't need to, need another pair of shoes just to feel better. You know, I need the, the footwear that's going to get me, you know, through to the next year or so. So it's really, you know, do I need this is the first question, I think. And, and then, you know, like you said, where does it come from? And, and but asking more questions is, is uh, really how you get to that awareness, isn't it? Jody? I have... Um... I have a lot to say. It is sort of so much in my head, but um, <laughs> the first, the first thing is a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions because I'm very new to learning all of this. And they're just things that I have not made the time to research and find out. Um, mm. So the first one is um, I have started making choices where I can. It's not all the time, but instead of buying a bottle of soft drink, I would choose to get a can of soft drink. Um, is that a better choice to start with? Um, and when I have um, looked at the, the bottles of plastic as well and, you know, I pretty much don't buy bottled water unless it's absolutely desperate, but um, soft drink, I still have my thing with. Um, I've we've house that for people that use uh, half bottles of water or soft drink or something in there as part of their irrigation system. So they like turn the bottle upside down and use it as like a drip thing and all sorts of things. So I can see there are uses, but I don't know what is better um, and is aluminium cans actually getting properly recycled. Um, I, I, are recycling, oh, I've got unstable internet saying, um, with the recycling of plastic bottles, like are they really doing proper recycling in the places that have them and are they being made into other things? Uh, if you do use a plastic bag, I'm, I'm sorry for so many questions, but these are kind of things that are coming up. Um, if you do use a plastic bag, one thing that we uh, were doing in Peru, and I had no idea, I have, still have no idea whether it was appropriate or not, but at the end of each day, uh, because we weren't flushing toilet paper, we would take our sort of plastic shopping bag that was being used to put the toilet paper in and putting it into the fire. So this is at high altitude and, and whatever. Is burning plastic bags an option? Um, or what? How does where does the line sort of go to? Where where does it end up going if it doesn't go into recycling? 
uh, even through to your clothing, like as you're saying, as your clothing wears out and whatever, where does that go to? Like what happens in the process? I never know. I actually don't like wearing clothes out until they are holy or broken because I don't know what to do with them after that. Um, that's actually one of my things. Um, so yeah, sorry for all the questions, but if anyone wants to join in. <laughs> Stacey's going to answer them all right now. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, as far as aluminum cans, it's always going to be preferable to plastic. Um, but recycling of anything depends on which country you're in. So I know in New Zealand at the moment, they're not doing anything with plastic. So that's why plastic is the big issue. Um, it's, there's, there's big differences between countries as well, between recycling and reusing. Um, so it also, it depends on um, a lot of social thoughts. Like uh, you were saying, using bottles to, um, in the garden and to build houses and things like that, that's reusing, but that is country specific as well. When you saw in Thailand, they don't care where the plastic goes. Um, as far as we didn't even see where the plastic went. So, um, yeah, I think each country is going to be specific. So that's quite a big topic. I'd say whatever country you're in, just do a little bit of research. Um, I think what you're saying about flat, the burning the, like the one plastic bag with the toilet paper in it, I know that burning plastic does create a chemical reaction that does go into the air. Um, it's one of those... I would personally take it out of plastic. Um, but if it's one bag, you know, I said 7 billion people, um, but, you know, um, yeah. I, I don't see what harm one bag could do when you're not putting that into landfill. So I don't know, that's just a personal opinion, not so much a scientific opinion. Um, and what was the other question? Sorry, um, clothing, like where it, and, and maybe even helping me understand the landfill aspect. So I, I'm 100% as a marine, you know, as a friend of a marine biologist. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and even Somebody being, forcing you to be aware of things. <laughs> but, but I mean, the, you know, as a Piscean as well, it's like the whole ocean thing yeah. and water and just what water does. And, you know, to a degree, I've even seen where I want to put my shutters on. I don't want to see that plastic, um, nightmare yeah. that is out there in the ocean. It's kind of like on land. It feels like I can maybe make a difference or do something, but that that ocean scene feels just so overwhelming. Like I literally burst into tears when I see those pictures of turtles that have been strapped with a mm -hmm. a ring pull, and um, mm -hmm. that's what resonates with me. But I, I've never really comprehended landfill, other than knowing that every single country on the planet um, has a lot of generally um, there is land and obviously there's landfill stuff happening but what mm. happens in that regard is that where that kind of burning thing happens or is everything being buried like I just don't understand the system um, in most landfills it's buried um, this is where I have a lot of issue with landfill especially here in New Zealand you know we have curbside um, rubbish taken away but the only way that they will pick it up is if it's wrapped in a plastic bag that you've paid for. Um, so then they go and they put it in the earth. And of course, the earth's not going to break down the plastic, but everything that I've put inside it, if I put in, um, I mean, not that I do, I, I put one bag out maybe every two months. Um, but my neighbor puts out seven bags a week. So they're obviously putting in their paper, their um, clothing, like back to clothing, clothing, cotton, natural cotton clothing will break down. Um, so if you choose cotton high or cotton rich or natural uh, hemp, um, natural fibers, even, you know, the polyesters and stuff, they'll eventually break down into smaller pieces. But if you wrap it in a plastic bag that won't break down, then you're kind of stopping the whole thing from breaking down. So I have real issues with that. Um, yeah <laughs> again awareness um yeah so. I, actually stacy i was quite uh, surprised 
as much as we love New Zealand, I, I'm glo you know, I'm, I, I talk every day about how much I love it here. There are quite a long ways behind in the recycling. Yeah. You know, we you know like it's like what? Are you kidding me? We're throwing that out? No. Uh, we we're at the marina in Nelson, uh, staying on a boat, and there's no recycling at the marina. Like all this, yeah. we're just throwing all our stuff in the garbage. Like 1957. You know, like. You know, I they, think they it's to, um, it's very there. much regional specific, um, mm. and it's all down to how much rates people pay. So it's all down to each council and their rates. Um, if, if you go over to Raglan, they mm -hmm. have the most amazing community system in place. Um, even your food, so even your compost, they will take it away in a biodegradable bag and mm -hmm. compost it for you all for free. Yeah. So, yeah, it is definitely regional, um, yeah. unfortunately. And, uh, I have a question. Uh, it was Jane that was talking about dry bagging her laundry. What's that all about? Hi. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you're familiar with dry sacks, they're, uh, what are they made of? I don't know. It's some kind of like rubbery plastic. It's sort of a rubber. It might be plastic, but if you buy one and you're using it and consuming it well, uh, it's made to keep your clothes, your items dry in the event of rain. They're great for camping, hiking, long-term travel. But because they're, they're waterproof, you can actually put water inside of it as well. So really, you can put your clothes in it, your water, your soap, shake it up, mush it around, just as if you were scraping it on a rock by the river. Um, drain it, rinse it, and then hang your clothes out. And you just use something really minimal in this little container. You controlled the amount of water you were using. You didn't use any electricity. You got to oh. work out with your arms. It's great. <laughs> Wow, cool. I saw somebody on a, uh, on a yacht once use a, uh, a toilet plunger. <laughs> they put, put all the clothes in a bucket and use a toilet plunger. <laughs> hey, whatever works for you. <laughs> whatever works. <laughs> Naomi, you got something to show us. No, it's, it's a dry, dry bag. Yeah, yeah, it's a course. dry bag. <laughs> it's a dry bag. Water this one? The laundry. I don't do my laundry in it though. That's a good idea. I've seen it. But, yeah. I, I know my my dry bag is for. This is how I carry anything that's that's liquid in my in my check bags. So I put it in a dry bag and yeah, that's close it up. So yeah. I, now there's something I need. <laughs> Off to the mall. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Hey, Mark. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> Came out has them for five dollars. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, check <laughs> how they made. Check <laughs> how they made. <laughs> I think that could actually be good to add to what Vanessa has asked, because um, she did ask in the inner circle about swag ideas for the house and pet sitting conference, and perhaps a dry bag might be actually be. Um, one of those things, if, if she could find that, because um, especially with Jane's, uh, Jane Allen's um, yeah, suggestion there for washing as well as using a dry bag. Um, and of course, everyone's probably aware of the, the straw and cleaner that I actually got that as a promotional thing from My Kitchen Rules uh, on Australia Day, uh, which has been really nice to carry. But yeah, there's there, I guess there are. What a, is it? Um, it's a, the metal straw. Um, and the, the cleaner, but it was a promotional thing from the TV show, My Kitchen Rules. Um, so oh, okay. Channel 7 was doing a promotion of handing out uh, the straw with a, um, a, a carry shopping bag that we fold up and leave in our bag as well. Hmm. Uh, but I think that the swag ideas, um, you know, they'd obviously be looking at putting the, the house and pet sitting logo on, on anything if they can get the uh, product. Oh, Louise, you're here. You can, uh, any? Have you got a, you guys thinking about what kind of amount of swag you're you're looking at having? That and and will it all be environmental uh, focused stuff? No, mm -hmm. it can't be. <laughs> we'd like we'd like it to be, but you know, not all of the companies that we're talking to are um, to have that kind of swag, right? Uh, even paper is is uh, processed. Um, Naomi's looking at. Uh, recycle the paper which I think is a great idea for um, uh, swag and but again there's a cost associated with that so as, and as you know this is the first conference so we don't have a whole lot of money to play with um, but we are looking at companies that 
might be able to uh, provide us with uh, certain things that are travel related yeah. that are, are more sustainable um, um, and, you know, aren't going to end up in a landfill because um, everything has to be portable anyways, right? Right. <laughs> So we're still in the process of looking. If anybody has any ideas, we'd love to hear them. Or if you know of any companies that we could go to, we'd love to hear them. Yes, uh, Jody. <laughs> um, not not for swag, but just uh, talking about reusable <laughs> bottles. But um, this particular one has an alkalizer, and I know that there are bottles that have the actual um, purification. So this isn't a purifier; it's just an alkalizer. But we've managed to carry it fine. It, it's metal and um, quite like drinking out of it so can I have an opinion on that mm -hmm. I'm not on your bottle but um <laughs> you're talking about swag Louise mm -hmm. if you <laughs> sorry no, um, sorry just I mean something like this I paid six bucks at mm -hmm. Kmart for it I know that you can yeah. get things printed with the Ooh. name of the conference on it so um I think like this is just a personal opinion if you get something cheaply printed and given a swag for everybody at the conference yes you are doing something cheaply but how many bottles are you actually how many plastic bottles are you saving so i think the bigger the goal like by giving everybody a reusable bottle and saying right here's a water filter fill your bottle um that already is making that impact so i know it's that cost over um Cost yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and but yeah. also we want to be um, um, aware of the idea of whether or not they are, you know, BPA uh, rated, yeah. recyclable, the whole bit, right? Yeah. So again, that adds to your cost, yeah. and we would rather do that than than mm -hmm. to just you know hand out you know yeah. plastic that's going to and that could very well end up not breaking down. I think the BPA thing now is pretty standard, um, yes, like not is. BPA. So, yeah. yeah, I know this one that I got at Kmart was, yeah, there's no BPA or anything in it. So, yeah. I'm just a I guess, do you, oh, oh, sorry, do you know of any, yep. Naomi? <laughs> yes. Do you know of any companies in the UK? Because, you know, Vistaprint isn't. That do uh, what? That, that would do printing on on um, uh, recyclable uh, plastic bottles. Oh, so I sent links on the paper to Vanessa for, for some different companies um, on the the plastic bottles. Uh, some of those links that I already sent, they would do that. Um, uh, but but I guess I would love to put in one other question: like, why are we doing swag? Like I know it's what people expect when they go to conferences, but um, it, it's your first year, you're on a budget. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who are coming who are travelers who don't necessarily want physical items, you know, to carry with them. So is there some other out, outside the box approach that would be like, instead of physical item swag, maybe it's experiential swag. Absolutely. Maybe you have. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 We are. We're absolutely. <laughs> we're absolutely. No, 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 no. Don't worry. We're absolutely looking down that avenue. But also, um, you know, people do like to take something home sometimes. You know, we're going to have uh, reusable bags and things like that. Uh, we're not looking at uh, having a ton of items. Because, yeah, we all have to travel. We all have to carry it with us. So mm -hmm. it's just going to end up in the trash, and we don't want that. We yeah. want to do it with purpose as so, opposed to just doing it for the sake of, of, of having the, the, the gift and the swag. And, you know, we know that our, our fellow house sitters will understand. <laughs> um, this, uh, just a suggestion that came to me with regards to all of that is like, why do we, I don't want to make this all about the conference either, but um, just even maybe the concept for all other conferences on the planet or what have you, the idea of, um, you know, branding something with a label, whatever else is they use it. I mean, we all use it as a way of, oh, getting the word out, getting the awareness. Well, it's out. marketing. Yeah. Marketing. But from that sustainable standpoint, um, you know, the, the Channel 7 gave 
gave me a red bag that is a, a reusable shopping bag. It's fantastic. We fold it up. We can carry it. That had the branding on it. Okay, this little thing does. But what if it didn't? What if this was just the hemp thing inside of it? And if the bottle, um, like a plastic bottle, literally just had a tiny little tag, shoestring tag tied to it that had the... the um, the label on it so not only do you save money on getting printing stuff but it's like oh it's the swag that comes in the important thing the important thing is the reusable bag and that came from the house and pet sitting conference that's the thing i wear over my shoulder that does the advertising um but all the little bits and pieces in it don't need to be um branded as such um and or if you're wanting to just have a little reminder you know yes it can be a little you know price tag thing on there with the, the thing and if that helps cut unless the cost there are sponsors. Unless, there, <laughs> unless there are some sponsors like me who want my brand on something <laughs> <laughs> there's one in every jersey. crowd is, you know that <laughs> this is my reusable bottle uh new world gave it to me uh when i first got to new zealand and i'm proud to say naomi this was absolutely within my budget it was free <laughs> I'm proud of it. <laughs> so, uh, anything else we want to cover off today? Just to know what everybody thinks about flying and getting around, like train buses. Yeah. Uh, do you plan your travel so that you're flying minimally? I mean, I tend to go to a place for, like, I'll fly to Europe and spend as long as I can in Europe rather than zigzag across the world. Yeah. But how bad would it do other people think about that? I think that's, I mean, that's how we try to plan it as well, Sharon. And I think, you know, somebody had said it in one of the groups, not going to get away from flying as, it's, mm -hmm. as it stands now, unless you're going to stay in your own country or you go to uh, countries that you can uh, walk to <laughs> or bike to. It's, it's, it's there. And if you can, again, use your awareness and um, take the, the, the planning, you do your, you go somewhere for six months, you do the six months and then you, you move on because you have to. But yeah, you, doing the zigzagging back and forth and, and, you know, flying four or five times within three months is, is uh, something that you, you know, if you want to make that choice, take a look at it. I think um, like we keep taking it back to the awareness. Um, if you're aware that, all right, I've just spent whatever long in an airplane, if you can then offset that by influencing, I don't know, work out a number that feels comfortable with you. So, um, like, for example, when we were just in Bangkok recently, I feel like I've influenced three people to actually be aware of their footprint on the planet. <laughs> Stop laughing, Sharon, you loved it. <laughs> so to me, that knock-on effect has offset my flights. Um, I know that technically it's not, but if I can reduce my footprint in that country and then influence other people without preaching that then makes me feel less guilty so yeah it's i don't think you should restrict your travel because that's what opens your eyes to where the problems are what you learn by traveling weighs outweighs far more than what the flight does cost so yeah um i I definitely want to add to that because um, I don't know why, but I have not had Southeast Asia on my radar to the point of even pushing it away. Um, I don't know how many other Australians haven't been to Bali, uh, but Nat and I are two of them. And I don't think, oh, excellent, cool, two more in the room. Um, but it's pretty much known that every Australian will experience Southeast Asia at some point time because it's the closest places it's other than New Zealand it's the closest we can get to you know we all love going to Europe but it's a long haul flight it's it's a long way away but for whatever reason I've avoided coming here and now I'm actually it I don't know I'm getting like these internal things going bang 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 all the time I didn't know why I wanted to avoid this area um, I always thought it was about just pure population. Like I just, I just can't stand the idea of so many people. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I've had a beautiful soft entry. You know, Bangkok was a fantastic soft entry. Uh, Singapore, oh. an even softer entry. My next place is Ho Chi Minh City. So I've got a little bit of a freak out about that because I believe it is pretty full on. But what is getting me, even in Bangkok and Singapore, is just the sheer amount of stuff. We went to the Mustafa 24-hour um, market, which is like this massive, massive, multi-level, sells mm. everything, um, everything. And I have just never seen so much stuff. And it's like, what happens with all this stuff? Not just the food things and the food that's wrapped in 20 billion aspects of plastic before they even, I don't even know if you were starving, if you could have afford the time to get it out. Um, the, the things, there's just so many things and stuff. And, and this is a totally different experience to being in Bangkok where, you know, every, every three or four kilometers is another big flash shopping mall that I absolutely appreciated the air conditioning on. Um, but that air conditioning is using energy and power, etc. And I don't know who's buying the stuff in there, um, but at least everything's quite open and sparse and lovely. But when you congest it down into these experiences, like what I just had, I was just, I'd be mind blown that, that, that we're producing this amount of stuff. We're producing this amount of toys and food's one thing, but like just what happens to it or what happens to it if it doesn't get purchased? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really starting to freak me out a little bit. Um, I don't even know if that was what I wanted to kind of say, but that's where it kind of ended up. But uh, yeah, um, the checks and balances is, is, is really, I think where it wanted to start it. Naomi said she's a bookkeeper that's kind of given me that whole, you know, debit credit aspect. What Naomi, uh, what uh, Stacey just said, yes, okay, she's taking a flight, um, you know, to and from New Zealand, and yet she's influenced two and a half um, people. <laughs> I don't know, I'll say three, Sharon, what do you reckon? Um, I don't, maybe that's the half. But is that an offset? Is that a balance? And uh, with regards to being nomadic and being a house-sitting traveller, a slow traveller, as opposed to somebody taking a vacation, you know, somebody's taking a vacation for a one week or a two week stay, they're flying in out. Um, we're doing slower travel and we're generally sort of doing that one way slower thing. Um, or even in Stacey's case, you were gone for over a month. So, you know, that sort of time period is not just you ran into Bangkok for a week and then ran back out and then you're going to run over somewhere else and come back in. Like, I think it is that checks and balances type of aspect. That's good. Thank you. Or maybe, maybe a way to think of it is, you know, yes, we are supporting your lines and, and all the issues that involved in that. But what are you going to do when you get there? You know, how, how, uh, how where are you going to be when you get there? How are you going to contribute when you get there? Are you just going there just to lay on the beach? Or are you actually going to be involved in the community a little bit or, or you know, look after somebody's pets? You know, maybe there's some justification there on, on why you're fine. I think also when you come to like coming to a place like Pet Squaro, the shopping at the market and stuff like that, I get paid from Australia and New Zealand, so I'm bringing mm. money into the economy as well, mm -hmm. and I'm not shopping in there in big no. mall. I'm supporting local no. people, so I like that. All right. Well, I think we've uh, just about uh, wrapped this up, so. Uh, unless anybody's got anything else to like to add. Uh, I really enjoyed the conversation today. I learned a few things and I hope everybody else has uh, taken away something and asked some more questions and, and uh, asked whether you, whether you need it or not. And, and uh, like Naomi said, uh, ask you know, where things have come from and, and, and just, just be, be more curious about uh, you know, the, the choices that we're making. So uh, I want to thank everybody for coming today, unless there's anything else. Thank you so much. Thank Doug. You I, I think it's, I think it is that wrap up. It's the, ask the questions, um, you know, do your own little bit of reusable. Um, and just to mm -hmm. add to, you know, because we're, I'm experiencing currently um, the Asian side of things where you've got, you, you are offered a plastic container with your 
fruit juice um, that comes with a, a plastic straw and then a plastic little loop carry thing Mm -hmm. what you can say no to i mean you know if i had my straw with me i wouldn't take the straw i certainly can hold it in my hand i don't need a little plastic hair bag so the little things that you can say no to um on top of just having your Mm -hmm. shopping uh, bags as well all right thank you everybody everybody. thank you everybody for your input and thank you stacy and naomi for coming in and um and louise and sharing um really important thank you We'll see you on the road.